Good afternoon, and a welcome to today's news. It's been quite the week. I understand that many of you are now out of jobs. How devastating it has been. Even us at the News Network have had to let many people go. We at the News Network want to clear up any misconceptions or misunderstandings that you have about this recent stock market crash. Truth be told, not even we know what truly happened, but we will try our best. I will start by trying to explain why the stock market crashed. But first, what does it mean for a stock market to crash? A stock is basically just a piece of a company. If I had one stock in a furniture company that had a total of 100 stocks, then I would own 1% of every piece of furniture that that company owned, and 1% of all the cash that that company had, etc. Of course, most com companies don't have 100 stocks. At the end of the war, while European countries were struggling to recuperate from the war, America entered a time of economic boom. People started buying stocks because they, become, they had become accustomed to buying war bonds. They bought tons and tons of stocks. So many stocks, in fact, that they had to borrow money from the bank. So thousands of people were holding on to stocks that were steadily rising and debt that was steadily growing. That is until last Tuesday, October 29, 1929, when all of the world's stocks plummeted in value. Why did this happen? I wish I could tell you for certain. The truth is, we don't know for sure. We can only hypothesize that it was a combination of the following factors. Companies producing an excess of product in response to the booming business in the 20s, which consumers just didn't have enough money to buy. The ability of credit and the policy of buying on credit. Canada depending on primary products such as fish, wheat, and the rest of the world no longer demanded or could afford. And high trade taxes or tariffs, which made international trade much harder. So somewhere in all of this, things went seriously wrong, and over the past five days, approximately $25 billion of personal wealth has evaporated. Many families, businesses, and countries have been left in ruins in what the world is now calling Black Tuesday. I will now transfer you over to Gabe, our chief field reporter, who is currently talking to Mr. Hello, Mr. Rikudi, very nice to meet you. Hello, sir. So I understand you're an accountant, correct? Well, I used to be. I got laid off a couple of days ago. Everyone did. The company went under. I'm very sorry to hear that. Yeah, they took my house away, too. I guess it serves me right, borrowing all that money from the bank. So where are you living now? With my mother. She lives a few towns away. So my daughters had to switch schools, but we're surviving. Is there any work in your mother's town? I don't think there's any work anywhere, sir. What are you keeping in mind as you try to get through this tough time? I'm just thinking about my daughters. I want them to have nice clothes, a nice house, food. But these days it's more of a dream than a reality. Okay, Mr. Rikudi, thank you for your time. I wish you the best of luck in achieving your dream. Back to you, Hashem. Thanks, Gabe. Now I'm going to switch over to you again, who's now speaking to corn farmer John Smith to see how the depression is affecting him. I'm on the farm with John Smith, a local corn farmer. Howdy. So, Mr. Smith, what's been happening with your crops lately? No one's buying them, Gabe. We send our corn on the train into town to see if anyone will buy it. Does anyone? Nope. No one does. No one wants our crops anymore. I guess no one has money in town either. I always used to get a bill back for all my corn with some money on it for me and the fam, but now I just get a bill for the train company. Do you think it's unfair how badly the crash has affected farmers? Honestly, everyone's in the same boat, Gabe. It's rough sometimes, though. The other night, someone broke into the farmhouse and took all the food out. No money, just food. Everyone's fighting to put some food on the plate for a dinner each night. Well said, Mr. Smith. It's been an honor speaking to you. That's it. In closing off this special report on stock market mania, we can comfortably say that there are too many factors affecting this, and it's not just in Canada. The entire world is affected. Clearly, there has been no international collaboration, no national economic planning, and the laissez-faire approaches of some country leaders like Harding, Coolidge, 
Hoover, and our own William Lyon Mackenzie King have been a major contributing factor that has led to these devastating results. The problem, as you can see, cannot be isolated and dealt with quickly, so it looks like we are going to be going through this for a long time. Let's remain hopeful that we will at least quickly see a slowdown in the number of bank bankruptcies, job losses, and families being reduced to poverty as the country turns inward to try and sort out their own problems. If not, the opposite could be a Great Depression that could last for many years. Stay tuned in as we will continue to bring the latest news on the effects of the stock market crash from around the world. Thanks for listening. Thank you.